Tonight we have two other public hearings on the agenda. Um, first, I'll ask for a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. A second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. So we have two public hearings um, tonight. Stu Turner, the village planner, is here to um, answer any questions that board members or member of the members of the public might have. Uh, the first public hearing is going to be on Greenwich Avenue rezoning and the creation of the CS1 zone. The second is on the places of worship block. Um, when we open the public hearing, I'm going to have Stu make a few uh, very brief comments. Um, I'm not going to have him run down the full piece again because we, we've all heard it you know, far too many times at this point. Um, but obviously if anyone does have any questions on particular issues, then Stu will really answer that. Um, just to uh, mention comments that I made at a previous meeting in terms of the Greenwich Avenue rezoning creation of the CS1, um, the opinion of the board in the past has been these two things are connected, the Greenwich Avenue, the places of worship law, because part of that is the creation of the CS1 zone. Um, part of what I would like to see in the board seem to agree is to increase the number of uses that are allowed in the, the new Greenwich Avenue zone that we create. Um, but I know that my, my thought and the board seemed to uh, agree was that we wanted to make sure we put enough time and effort and thought process into whatever new uses we allow in that new zone. Um, so it was probably best for the time being to just agree to split the zone in half, have that new zone, and then revisit that in the next weeks and months ahead to add additional uses in there, just so we could get moving on the places of worship law to be compliant with the uh, new federal loop law. Um, so I know that you know we talked about this a few times, and board members I know are independently talking to people they know on Greenwich, outside of Greenwich, on what uses they'd like to see allowed there that are right now. I know I I mentioned um, increased density in housing. That's just me individually would like to see uh, a greater emphasis on that in that area. Um, but tonight we're just going to we're discussing the splitting of that and we're allowing religious land use in that zone and the new Greenwich Island zone. Uh, we will not be voting on either of these local laws tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask the board for the approval to allow written comments for another week after tonight in case there was someone that wanted to be here and couldn't make it, or someone that didn't see it in the paper and couldn't make it. So they'll still have an opportunity to present comments to the board. Um, with that, I'll ask for a motion to open up uh, the first public hearing on Greenwich Avenue rezoning creation of CS1 zone. So moved. And a second? Second. Any board comments or discussion before we? All right. Um, so do I'll, first I'll turn it to you to make some general comments if you want. I know it's two public hearings, but if you want to use this time to talk about both local laws in front of us, so you have some kind of, they're so tied together. So. Uh, that's correct, uh, Mayor. They are, they are tied together, and we won't go back into all the history of how we got to this point unless there are some more questions. Um, with regard to the CS1, um, just so that it's clear in the record that uh, there has been, as you said, a uh, discussion of making portions of the Granite's Corridor more flexible and, and uh, open to more uses. And where you have ended this particular discussion is just to add into that zone uh, the provision for houses of worship, for daycare, and for one, two, and three family houses. Now there are some one, two, and three family houses, not too, not too much residential development, but there was feeling early on that uh, it just uh, making them uh, making them permitted uses uh, might encourage the maintenance, better maintenance of those buildings as time went on. The main thing really is that it carries all of the uses in the central zone, central shopping zone, the business, main business zone, plus those three uses. And that's um, that's the, the the text of the zone. Now there's a map attached to it, um, which I I think has one mistake in the in the um, not in the map. The map is correct. The map shows the proposal to rezone from uh, High Street on down uh, to close. Um, but it includes uh, the, the triangle down there that really we had proposed would be in the DS zone and it shows up on the map as in the DS zone. It's across the street from the old Grand Union Shopping Center. Um, and, but the text includes it in the portion of the zone that would be CS1. I believe that property is uh, 
114.420, and that's what it's referred to in the text. Um, 114.420. I think that property should be deleted from the text reference. It's not included in the, in the map. It's the map shows it as a DS zone. Is that is that clear? I mean, the, the difference. Oh, that's my suggestion. Why you to make that change would that necessitate a new public hearing? That change in and of itself would not require a new public hearing. Okay. Okay. Not unless you're going to tell me it's the largest tax map in the Village of Ocean. The largest. The largest one. tax parcel in the Village of Ocean. Not the largest, but not even close. Um. <laughs> So no, and, it would not. Okay. And the only other thing that uh, we we just, as you said, I, we could comment on both things. The the comment on the religious land use law is much uh, shorter. Um, the religious land use law permits religious land uses in all zones in the village. Proposes to permit in all zones in the village except the CS zone. The hearing that you had some time back on the religious land use law did not include. A reference to the uh, OBH zone because at the time your board was considering uh, a separate modified zone for OBH which would have included the religious land uses. So there was no reference but the law does say all zones except CS zone. So I believe it's correct in that regard but there needed to be some language inserted into the second part of the law which specifically mentioned the OBH zone because it mentions every other zone. So that's the only difference. But we're having a hearing now, so um, if there needed to be, if you know, if council advised that there needed to be a hearing because of that change, um, then we're having a hearing. It's just it's a very small change. It's a language change, really. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And before we open up the public comments, I, I do want to read the legal notice into the record. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Goshen, New York, will hold a public hearing in Village Hall 276 Main Street, Goshen, New York, on July 9, 2012, at 7.30 p.m., or as soon as may be heard, to consider the adoption of a local law to create a CS1 zone with appropriate uses and regulations and to rezone the area of Greenwich Avenue to this new CS1 designation. The Village of Goshen will make every effort to assure that the public hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requiring special assistance and or accommodations, contact the, the village clerk. All right, with that, I will open up to any public comments. Mr. I guess I'm it. Um, first of all, just uh, an administrative detail with regard to the public notice you just read. Uh, I know that it was in the Indy, and in that regard, it meets the minimum requirements of the law. I was unable to find it in the Chronicle. Was it published in the Chronicle, and if so, on what date? Uh, I'm not sure. Do we have that in the Chronicle? Or just you have to check the record. Okay, well, find out. Because I was signed a voucher paying for it, so that much I can tell you. Mm -hmm. For the Chronicle, you sure that's not for the bid ad? Because that, that appeared the, the following week. Okay. Um, well, we can find out. You know, either way, we did publish it. Like the, we're the reason that that's of significance. Uh, you know, it's a conversation with council. Is that uh, this may not be a functioning public hearing if it doesn't meet the requirements of public notice? Um, with that said, and that's between you and council, um, I always try to look at things from as many perspectives as possible, and so I will, would like to agree with people and disagree with people tonight. Uh, Mr. Brady, Trustee Brady, uh, observed a couple of meetings ago that um, this religious use and, and the rezoning, is, a, or particularly the, the rezoning in light of the religious use, is a question of balancing the equity of um, business use of property against religious use. And that, that certainly is the case. Um, Trustee Stewart observed that if there is to be a limitation uh, on the potential uses of property, that the board should make efforts to expand uses uh, of those properties. And certainly, uh, the, the next thing I would have to say is that allowing religious use on commercial property does limit its use uh, and thereby 
lowers its market billing and its value. What this has in practical effect, and whether or not it's in legal effect, I guess remains for a court to adjudicate, is that it's a taking without compensation. You are reducing the value of somebody's property and they're not being compensated for it. Now, Trustee Smith uh, observed that if you're going to get sued over the limitation of religious use, you're going to get sued. And although I understand Mr. Donovan's rationale that the smaller the area you're restricting, the less likely you are to be sued, I think uh, Trustee Smith is also correct in that a couple of hundred yards is not going to make a difference in this regard. But I think what you may be doing here uh, is exactly the reverse. You may be inviting a litigation for discrimination by people who own property now that is absolutely identical to, to property adjacent to them and has the same uses assigned to it now. And now you're turning around and discriminating against them. They're paying the same tax rate. They've paid this tax rate all along. You're now lowering the value of their property, discriminating against them, telling them that although they have been able to use it as their neighbors have, all of a sudden they're not going to be able to. So in, in that sense, uh, I think exactly the opposite of, of what uh, was said is the case. You may actually be opening up litigation coming from the other direction. Uh, I think as you all know, because I've droned on endlessly about it, I believe that this village is in serious economic shape, uh, and the more that is done to stimulate economic activity, the better. Uh, health and welfare being the operative conditions, I think the more you do to, to stimulate business and nurture economic activity, the better. Now, there was, there was a uh, state Office of the Comptroller's report for Highland Falls that was recently published. I can almost hear you thinking out loud, why is he bringing up a, a state audit for Highland Falls? This is about religious use. The letter of response from the village board of Highland Falls was very interesting. And I, would, I would suggest that you all read that report. It's an easy read. Uh, it, I would even say it's probably compelling reading. Um, the, the letter at the end, it's a one-page letter, I would also recommend you read it. And they point out, and I'm paraphrasing very loosely here, that, uh, and, and by the way, Highland Falls is, is a little smaller than Goshen, uh, population-wise, but also a historic village, also old, also has infrastructure issues. So it's a com nice comparative point of reference. The, the, the village board pointed out that they have little commercial development and no industry. Uh, there's an absence of vacant property suitable for commercial or industrial development, overwhelmingly <coughs> residential, uh, that there's a nonlinear relationship um, of the major infrastructure costs to the community size. That's my phrasing, not theirs. But basically they're saying that, that with a larger community, you may have the same infrastructure costs to repair, maintain, or, or build a sewer plant, but you have a smaller base to do it on. Um, you going to connect these dots first, Joel? What's that? You're going to bring this together? I am. Okay. I am. Because that is exactly the point that I'm making about economic activity in this village. We have a declining assessed base. We have a declining economic situation in this village. The last thing we want to do is throw roadblocks in the way of economic development. And I'm afraid that Mr. Smith is right, Trustee Smith is right, that allowing religious use, discriminating against those property owners and allowing religious use along what is the primary gateway into this community and the primary commercial corridor of this village um, it is going to damage not just the economic activity of the village, not just the, the finances, the economy, but the fiscal well-being of the village as well as every taxing entity that relies on that tax base. You're not just affecting the village, you're affecting the school district as well, and the fire district, and the town, and the library. So, bottom line, as you all have concluded by now, the property owners and business owners from Greenwich Avenue, a small group of four of them came in here and 
beg you not to restrict their ability to realize value in their property. I'm afraid that the board has not done a, a stellar job of proactively going out to the community through public relations. The empty room kind of demonstrates that. Um, it's your own editorial, Joel. And the floor is mine to do that. Um, <coughs> you threw me off track. The, the, the bottom line is that you want to make the village and the community fiscally viable and economically uh, abundant. And I'm afraid that restricting this use will not do that and very, very well may invite litigations that this municipality certainly can't afford. Jolie, so certainly you are aware that the genesis of this was the federal law that was passed. I am. Because I, 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 actually, I wanted to say something about that. Thank you, Carol. Um, Mr. Donovan pointed out that um, <coughs> the law calls for no undue restraint of. And that this is something that I've been thinking quite a bit about, and particularly after Trustee Smith uh, raised his objection. By splitting off this zone, you are actually making a discriminatory judgment. I don't mean discriminatory in a negative manner. I mean you're discriminating between two areas, which currently share one burden of, of uh, one hurdle to, to cross. Um, what do you mean? That currently it's all CS. Okay. You have one code that, that, that uh, uh, pertains to all of it. Okay. By splitting this off, if anything, you're, you're creating an undue burden, a more of an undue burden in the central core of the village as opposed to this other area. It just, it, in, in terms of, of, of square yardage, square footage, it's a small area. And I think you're making a distinction that's going to come back and bite you. And it's not necessary to do. You, the, the point that I was making about Highland Falls is that there's every reason, there's every economic reason for the village to promote economic activity in its core <coughs> commercial district. The village will suffer in, in a variety of ways that I just laid out if you impinge upon the ability of property owners to develop. Which is why I think the federal law you know, creates a challenge for local It certainly does. This is our way of addressing that challenge. But if you leave it alone as it is and allow religious use in all of the other zones, you are not placing an undue burden on the practice of religion. You, you are, it's not undue because you can demonstrate, I, I went on the state site last night, uh, the, the comptroller site, the total amount that was expended in fiscal 2011 by this municipality was $15.9 million on a population base that's declining and now, <coughs> according to those numbers, stands at 5454 And I don't know what it is currently, but that is as of the 2011 fiscal year. I called uh, the school today, Jane Onion told me that the school population is essentially holding steady but with a bias to the downside. And as far as projections go, they have no reasonable way to project at this point because it's keyed off, their projections have been keyed off that development which is in front of the town and, and the village planning boards. How is this relevant to the local law in front of us? because it, it goes to economic viability and how you're spreading the costs. You're spreading the costs. Uh, certainly the, 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 the school taxes are as much a burden on the community as the village taxes, more so because 50% of our bill comes out of the schools. So if you're reducing the assessed base in the village, as I said before, that affects not only the village, it affects the fire district, the library, the town, the schools. So just to you're, so you're summarize, raising, you're raising your tax rate for all of those entities. So you're saying that the, your opinion is that the village should not allow religious land use in the entire CS In the, right, because that is your commercial zone. That's what you own property it. there, right? What's that? You own property. Well, that that one fourteen four twenty okay. that we were talking about is on the edge of that. Okay. Um, and even if, even if I did, I would make the same argument because it, it, this isn't so much about. 
the individual property owners, the argument that I'm making. It's the community at large, because if the value of those properties declines, somebody's got to make up the cost. And the only way to do that is to raise the tax rate on the rest of the property owners in the village. If you don't have a viable, active, economic, commercial core, the only place the money can come from to avoid a deficit is the residential property owners. It's all the rest of us. And what I'm saying is, let the business district be a business district. That was my argument at the signage committee. It's my argument in this case as well. You have a commercial core. Let it be a commercial core. Let it bang like Warwick and Chester and Florida bang. What would be the rationale to allow it in the CS zone but not the DS zone? To allow religious use? The restriction of religious use? Not allow it in the CS zone as currently situated but not the DS zone or like you have the CVS plaza and all that. Because it comes to Mr. Diamond's argument that you're not to place an undue burden. You're trying to keep the restriction of religious use confined to the smallest feasible area without it having an undue effect on the community. My argument is that... If I can, that reads the law. You read the law. I mean, a lot of policy discussions here, which you can have with the board. I'm not in charge of policy. But in terms of the law itself, I mean, the law doesn't say you can't place an undue burden on the business community. It says you can't place an undue burden on the community. No, I understand that. I thought you said that. No, no. What I'm saying is I understand your argument about not placing an undue burden on the business community. It's not my argument. It's not my argument. It's the federal law. It's the federal law. Right. But I think the reality is, though, I agree with you. I think that the RLUIPA law is challenging to me in a lot of ways because of the discussions that we've been having. Right. You know, I laid a lot of points. You brought a lot of points forward. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I just don't know if we're tasked with having to not restrict religious land use in our municipality, how can you differentiate between the CS zone and the DS zone and Plows Avenue and Hatfield Lane and all that area? Because the federal law requires you not to place an undue burden on the practice of religion. But as Trustee Brady pointed out, you're balancing equities here. By restricting it to the smallest possible area. Couldn't you argue that's what we're doing, though? But you have more development of restaurants within your CS zone than you do in your industrial zone, in your office zone. Those aren't particularly zoned for restaurants and bars. Well, the DS zone, there's a lot of restaurants. Let's face it. All of this discussion is predicated around the impingement on businesses because of the restriction on selling alcohol. That's been a lot of the discussion. Absolutely. Right. So if you allow, if you keep religious use from the CS zone, that's where most of your restaurants and bars and food service places that serve alcohol are going to be. They're not going to be in your designated shopping areas as much. Or if they are, you have, in the DS zones, you tend to have larger parcels. So your, what is it, 200 or 500 foot offset is more likely to be met in the industrial and the DS zone. That's still where you want to develop that area and have restaurants, though. I mean, I understand what you're pointing out. I think it's a valid point. But I think that if you're saying, you know, you should allow it on the Greenwich Corridor because you have people there who want to develop, I think the exact same argument could be made in the DS zone. You're absolutely right. You're not going to find a situation where you have 100% perfect situation. There's going to be a balancing act no matter where you do it. Somebody's going to end up having their ox scored, whether it's on the religious use side or property owner side. There's going to be an impingement one way or another. That's why Trustee Brady was right. You're balancing one against the other. But my argument is that the community needs a vital commercial core. And everyone on this board agrees with you. And impinging upon that gateway and that core will have an adverse effect, which will be large and will affect the fiscal condition of this municipality, as well as every other taxing entity that's part of this community. And so that's the meat of my argument. Joel, for the last year, I haven't been on the board, but you 
brought up pretty much every day the litigation that we dealt with, correct, with the town and the money it cost us, things like that. Are you weighing that into your equities of, you know, the, the burden that would come upon all the property owners? Every, you know, uh, are those things that are considered in it? Because ultimately, I, I'm not one, of the, one of the factors in the cutoff of the line is to avoid litigation, is it not? Well, yeah, I mean, when you talk about um, the potential to lower the value of property, and thereby <coughs> increase the tax rateable, um, you, you know, on the first of all, I don't know that the the law generally favors religious uses and educational uses, um, but I think the point that Trustee Brady is making, what I what I my role is, to try to minimize the exposure of the village right. board. So if there is a religious institution that wants to be in a certain location and they're denied and they bring a RELUPA lawsuit, what's the what's the potential for the village getting hit with a huge monetary damage award? And that that that's I think that's what Trustee Brady said. Well, yeah. is, is that funny? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm, there's no certain in this right now. Right. The law is new. We don't have any, 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 anything to match it up against. And it's not to say that a year from now we can't be looking at that new CS2, the, the new zone, and say the same thing and then expand it there. But from minimizing it, okay, I, I just want to finish. Okay. But, but to, at the point we're at right now, the assessment and the advice we got from our council was it's clearly been stated. Our job to take that information, weigh the equities with what information we have. And, you know, from my standpoint, I certainly see Peter's point. And in a perfect world, expand it as far as you can. Everybody's happy, right? But, you know, we got to minimize the opportunity for us to be sued. I mean, it's a reality. It's a lawsuit world we've created, and we have to weigh that. We went through all this stuff. I, what I was getting at is, for the last year, one of your questions at the end of every night has been about, what is the cost of litigation, or was for a while? What was the cost of litigation with the town? Was it not a question that you asked when I sit back? Oh, I asked that question, but that hasn't been the bulk. Of the, I, but it was an issue. Was it not an issue? Funds. Okay, that's an issue for me. I, I mean, I live in that world, so I want to minimize that. I can't predict the burden that this is going to have on the property owners. It's a valid point what you're saying about it being spread around. If we're cutting off business. That's a very valid point, but I know litigation costs money. Right. I agree with you. So I, I, I'm going to go to the one that I know we're most susceptible to. Um, a year from now, doesn't mean we can't revisit. Yeah. I, I, okay. Pra practically, that doesn't happen. But, uh, it's, but it just theoretically. So practically, it does happen. We're doing it right now. We're doing it with a zone right now. So no, this this has this has been under discussion since Bob Weinberger started this. Uh, it's, is it happening tonight? Into effect. Is it happening tonight? With the current no, board, I'm saying is once it's in place, it's not likely to who, change. Who was the guy who mentioned? Bob Weber. <laughs> okay. Started this. Okay. Actually, no. Actually, Mayor Wolf started. Did he? Yeah. yeah. But is it going on tonight? We'll we cut forward. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, I'm, not, I'm not being adversarial. No, no, no. no. I'm just saying we're, we're I'm operating in the world that I'm in right here. I, I agree with you in, in large part. But there is one thing that, that I think can be looked to, and that's um, uh, pointing it at uh, council here because he, he's probably the most versed in it. Uh, I, I'm sure that, there, and I know there is because I've read some of it, there's precedent ar around uh, communities litigating over, over religious use. Well, they have standing right now. Until you're burdened, you don't have standing to, you're not discriminated against. I'm just, I'm just saying that yeah, they have standards every day. There's guidance in this place. I just, I just want to jump in. I, I, I think I, think I um, started turning this, in, you know, by asking questions and answering. I, I made us veer off track, and I apologize. You know, huh? it is a public hearing to, for us to hear you. You are the public. But I think it's you. Oh. Well, I mean, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Fair enough. But um, you know, I just kind of want to bring us back together. Um, I think you've, you've made your point loud and clear to the board. I'm not sure if you have anything to expand on that. Yeah, I, 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 just one, you do. one thing I wanted to, to, to wrap up uh, with, with <coughs> regard to, to what Trustee Brady was, was positing. And that is, and, and, and you, you were uh, hinting at it as well. If you follow the logic of restricting it, well, why not restrict it down to uh, one square block? Why not just make it a little nub at the core of the village where you're restricting it? The, the, the point of trying to uh, create a core is that this core is where you expect your uh, economic activity to flourish. And, and this is where I'm agreeing with Trustee Smith. I think, think he's absolutely right. 
that that corridor is the gateway to the village. It's the, the commercial gateway. You've got 207 coming out the other end, but that's all residential and offices. And it, it, it doesn't have the flourishing of economic activity that Greenwich does. And Greenwich always has. So I think you're shooting yourself <coughs> on the foot to, to uh, try to limit business uses there. And allowing religious use there will limit business uses. I, you know, I, okay. I'm positing that as a given. I just want to kind of clarify a couple of things that I had done in to make sure that folks understand it thoroughly. Um, I did, Joe, where you were talking about the gateway to the village, that's probably one of the biggest reasons that I'm adamant about it's, it being included in there, because that is the entranceway into the village, the beginning part of the village. And I think it's probably ludicrous that that wouldn't be included in there. And then when you even look at the map here, it just looks silly, the map, where you've got this L-shaped piece on the side here. And my point, what I'm trying to say is, is if you've got all of this and you add this to it, how much more culpable are we for litigation with that little extra piece there that is the beginning of the entranceway to the village where we have our little welcome to the Goshen sign? That's one. Two, I went and did a little bit of research, and we have more places of religious worship than any place in Orange County, than any municipality in Orange County. Okay? So if we're not a, youth, a religious, user-friendly place, it would be kind of hard for somebody to sue us when we have more places of worship than Newburgh, the city of Newburgh, more than the city of Middletown, more than the city of Port Jervis, more than Warwick, more than Washingtonville we have more places of worship than they do, okay? But what we also have is we have the burden of Orange County as far as tax-wise in the village of Goshen. We have more non-taxable property in the village of Goshen than any other place in Orange County. Yeah. So I'm just saying that on the sane aspects of it, I just see, think that I, I just can't even see this. This, is, this to me is like a no-brainer yeah. that, that this is incorporated into there. And it's not to discriminate against anybody or for that purpose. It's to promote viable tax-paying people that are going to put up infrastructure, that are going to pay taxes in this village so we can stay afloat. Okay? <coughs> and there's plenty of other areas that religious use is restricted to. But even if you just look at the map and you just take it in the sensible aspects of it, it it should be square at all, or at least rectangled off. But, you know, you've got this little one chunk here, and I just can't fathom how this little chunk, that's the gateway to the village of Goshen, okay, the gateway to the community that encompasses the hospital where I was born at, that that, is, that piece is going to make a difference. In, in any potential litigation that somebody should put well, against us or whatever happens. This, this piece right here would be the new CS zone where religious land use is allowed. And okay. It's allowed here. Okay. So this, it's this whole strip. Uh, everything but this central section. Okay. So I think um, Stu was talking about bringing this section in into this zone where religious land use wouldn't be allowed in either of these. Okay. The only place it's... Oh, I'm sorry, would be allowed in both those. Mm -hmm. point means the same. Okay, but the sure. point that we're talking about the areas right here. No, we're right. talking about this is all one zone right now. We're talking about. So you're talking area. about not this area here, which this is. This is. Uh, uh, we're talking about the the dark shaded area, the CS one. This is the new zone where it would be allowed. Okay, it would, would be allowed. Compared to allowed. Compared well, allowed. Really yes. Right. Okay. Won't right. okay. we'll be allowed over here. Okay. No, we'll be allowed. In yeah, the, the, the new yeah, will just be the new CS. Right. Well, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I, I might not have it exactly perfect on the map here, but the point of where we're talking about is from Prospect Avenue all the way up to Close Avenue, am I correct? From High Street, yeah. Oh, High Street, excuse me, yeah. else to the thing. And again, right. like I said, that is the gateway to the village. That's the entrance to the confines of the village coming in off the major thoroughfare that feeds the village. And to have that not part of the business district and no, no, in that thing. It, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. It is part of the business district. It, okay. It, to yeah. have it. Uh, okay. I, I, I just want, I, but I did want to make one point, and, and it, I, I know we didn't want to go back all into the history, but when we started this and we had advice from council, we started, I think, with the with the notion, and this goes back now a while, 
uh, that religious land use, which is not permitted except in a couple of residential zones, would be would be permitted everywhere in the village. And then the village board at the time said, well, wait, we really would like to be able to maintain the, our commercial core with the continuity and not have religious land use in the core of the village. And so that was the genesis of the discussion. That was the beginning of the discussion that said, let's try to just you know, have the core of the village, which was the at the time considered by the village board as the economic a critical economic base. Council found cases that would sustain that notion that the economic core of a community could be precluded from having religious uses, and that so that was the beginning of the discussion of trying and, and, to make and it smaller. Pete, not to disagree with your point because I, I don't. That's not my right. <clears throat> but the goal at the time was to try to eliminate the potential for storefront churches. Right. So in other words, Joe fixes, Brian Dunlevy retires, moves, and so it comes right there, right in that storefront, and then that, that has an impact on that entire, um, you know, all the way down from the bakery to, to Baxter's, versus if Steve, Steve Esposito sold his building to a whatever religious land use, which becomes by itself up on the hill with its own parking. I mean, that, that was kind of the thinking of the village board Whatever it was four or five years ago. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking that you had you you the entrance way to the village to me, which is terrible that the way that the situation is in Greenwich Avenue right now. Period. Um, it looks like Skid Row, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the the first impression that people get driving into the village of Goshen. And I just think that it's bad overall for the image of Goshen. Period. Um, but then I go back to the thing of I just would find it hard for any faith-based institution to sue the village when we have more places of worship than any other place in Orange County. And so to look at us as if we're discriminating against something when we are the leaders of places of religious worship, we are also the leaders of non-taxable uh, uh, properties in Orange County. So you know we, we we you know we we certainly need to just I, I think take care of the village itself. We, our 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 responsibility is to the village, and what's in the best interest of the village, etc. and stuff like that. I mean the county has had its foot in the village for years now, and it's not going to change. But you know we already have tax exempt everything, schools, you know you name it, county buildings, old buildings that should I mean that they're beautiful to look at, but they're not we're not kept like that any tax is on them and they're not really getting used. Um, and things of that nature. And then we've got a, an area that potentially is the only there's not a lot of in the village downtown section property left to do something with. And that's it up there. So we're taking the, the, the something that the only piece we got left, the entranceway to the village and we're gonna cut it out. It's not exactly. I mean, uh, I, I I actually I, mean, I I totally agree. With you. I don't know where it stops, Peter. That's the problem. Like for me, I'm comfortable with that spot because council's invited. From a from a lay person, I agree with you. I would you know why not keep extending? Why not go into DS? You well, know, I mean, but you don't you know, have to go just to just stop. You know, at this point, this is a public hearing. Yeah. Now, this is for the public to comment, right. not for us to be here arguing about this. We've discussed this, and we all have our own opinions. This is for public comment. Yeah. We don't even have any public here other than our usual presence. And, and I'd like to make one technical <laughs> point that, that uh, Stu brought up, um, and, and, uh, and one brief technical comment uh, about something that uh, Trustee Stewart brought up. Uh, with regard to the 114-420 property, um, there is a, that originally was a triangle and it got bisected, and so uh, you look at your map, you see, it, I'm sorry, it was a rectangle, it became a triangle when Clouds Avenue went through. If you look in the uh, southeastern corner of that property, you see a little lot notched out of it where there was a house that got knocked down. That was my uncle's house. Uh, it's, the title now resides with my cousins who are family partners in the lot next to it, the Fortis Clouds. So what I would ask, uh, and I spoke to Mr. Turner about this before the meeting, is that if you are going to uh, correct the map, 
um, that that house lot be reincorporated into the lot in terms of the zoning rather than being broken out separately uh, as it currently exists in, on the map in front of you. I believe the map in front of you shows that house lot as CS and Mr. Turner was referring to the rest of that triangle in BS. So what I would request you do is integrate it uh, to facilitate being able to uh, have the property developed so that it's all, all one zoning across the entire parcel. Okay. Is that our response? Uh, I'm not saying well, since, since, you. since you are doing zoning with this law, I'm asking that the zoning be adjusted to simply uh, incorporate that one little uh, sure. residual piece there. We'll look at that one day about it we meet tomorrow. With, with regard to uh, a point that Trustee Stewart brought up earlier about uh, trying to expand uses uh, if, if you do go ahead and allow religious use in, in CS1 and split it off, uh, that there should be some compensatory move made to expand use for the property owners uh, so affected. Uh, and I just want to uh, refer you back to the meeting that took place under the aegis of the chamber in April of 2009, where you had business and property owners from that corridor who uniformly uh, presented to the board members who were there and, and to the uh, chamber officers who were there that what they feel is necessary along that corridor is an improvement <coughs> of the drainage, the roadway, and the appearance of that corridor. So if you're looking to benefit those properties, I would suggest one of the first things that the municipality do is get Greenwich Avenue listed on the tips list for roadway improvement where the electrical lines are buried, the utility lines are buried, Drainage is improved so it's not uh, icing in the winter and causing a hazardous condition. And the road is widened um, to, to both allow for better traffic flow and appearance. Okay. Any other public comments? All right. I'm going to ask for a motion to close the public hearing but allow for written comment for a length of one week. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, now we have the second public hearing. This is technically, this one is on the place of worship law, but we'll read the legal notice in. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Goshen, New York will hold a public hearing at Village Hall, 276 Main Street, Goshen, New York, on July 9, 2012, at 7.30 p.m., or as soon as after may be heard to consider the adoption of a local law to allow or appropriate limit to list uses in the various zoning districts of the Village of Goshen, the Village of Goshen will make every effort to assure that the public hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requiring special assistance and or accommodation should contact the Village Clerk. Um, before I ask for motion to open this, um, any public, I mean, Obviously, these things are tied together. If there's something different that anyone wants to mention that wasn't mentioned the first time, by all means, I just, you know, it can't just be merely repeating the same comments as the previous time because those were on the record. I'll ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any public comment that hasn't already been conveyed? Yes. Uh, just a question. This, uh, will existing religious use in this district be protected? Or perpetuated. Yeah, so I was going to seek the outlaw of all Protestant religions, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Right? Sorry, be careful. Does anyone have Just one technical uh, point, which I made in the previous public hearing. Uh, I, I raised the question as to the uh, viability of this as a public hearing uh, until that issue of the advertisement is resolved. Okay, thank you. All right, there are no other public comments. I'll ask for a motion to close this public hearing but allow for written comment for a period of one week. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we have the minutes from the village board meeting from June 25th, 2012. Here's our omissions. Uh, there now, I'll ask for a motion to approve. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Village board work session from July 2nd, 2012. Here's our omissions. Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Mm -hmm. so, second. second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. We have a communication from Corson Arts Alliance. Dear Mayor Roddy and Trustees, please accept this letter as my official request for the use of Salesian Park on Saturdays and Sundays, July 14, 15, 21st, 22nd, 2012, 
for our annual Shakespeare in the Park production. The show runs from 3 to 4.30 on those days, rain or shine, unless lightning. The tent will be set up on Thursday, July 12th at 11 a.m. All permits, contracts, and insurance forms have already been submitted. I will be making arrangements for portable bathroom facilities this week. We will require the use of the electrical post near the Pond Circle. This year's production will be much moved by nothing. It is sponsored by the Goshen Public Library and Historical Society. The flyer is attached. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Kent Shan, Director of Theater Course and Alliance. I know this has been done for the past few years. Always has a great success. They put on a great show. And I know I'll be there to attend. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. Any board member comments or questions? All right. All in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we have all advertisement for bids for sanitary sewer cleaning and CCTV inspection project. The Village Board of the Village of Goshen hereby authorizes the advertisement for bids for the sanitary sewer cleaning and CCTV inspection project and sets the bid opening for Monday, August 6, 2012 at 10 a.m. Village Hall, 276 Main Street. All right, can you just kind of um, describe to the board what this project is exactly? Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a grant, a $75,000 grant from the county. Uh, which uh, the village has obtained, and that grant is going to be used for, um, as it says here, sanitary sewer cleaning and, and inspections in various locations throughout the village uh, where it's deemed uh, the most necessary. So we put together uh, a project uh, here at Village Hall, and we want to be able to go out and advertise for that. Right. Thank you. And I know that after we secured that grant, we were hoping that it could be used towards infrastructure, right. but it could not. It was kind of restricted about what it could be used for, and this is the best use of those funds. All right, yeah, so thank you in your office for your work on this. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. And a second? Second. Right. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we have an abstract of vouchers. Uh, bills as examined by members of the board were approved in accordance with abstract 2012-2013, number 2, check numbers 3677, 3771, in the amount of $315,311.69. I have a motion to approve. So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. On to Mayor Trustee Comments, Star Trustee Brady. Um, Water report, I uh, spoke with Mike, um, he said that uh, the, the filtration <coughs> is keeping up with the excessive heat, so he's, uh, he's satisfied in that area. We're at uh, minus seven inches in the reservoir, which um, according to Mike, we're, we're in good shape that uh, we should be fine uh, to make through the rest of the summer. Um, so that's, that's in good shape. Uh, Great American Weekend was, uh, was a success. Participated in the dunk tank with a few uh, other board members. Thought it was a um, uh, neat opportunity. Um, some people got their shots in, so that was good. And uh, one thing, Joel, you mentioned earlier regarding um, getting, you know, there's no one here. Uh, you know, I've been trying to actively participate in social media, uh, specifically the Goshen, New York Facebook page, trying to encourage people to come out here, um, answer the questions within reason. That isn't, uh, you know, board commentary, but encouraging them to come down here, letting them know I posted. The meeting schedule is up there. Um, anything that is uh, pertinent, I put out there. So, uh, you know, trying to, to certainly be creative and getting the word out. And I think eventually people will come back down, but, uh, you know, eventually. You know. It, it's, it's July. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this um, is depressing. It, it, you know, it, well, you know, I, I don't know. And for me, it's, it's a little upsetting. People. I, anytime I pass someone on the street, they have a comment to make, they have a suggestion, they have the solution to the village's problems. I encourage them to come down here, um, participate in your local government, but um, you know I'm not going to drag them down here. You know, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say. It's it's kind of discouraging, but hopefully it will change. So that's all I got for you guys. You know, starting for the bar, then that might be false imprisonment or kidnapping or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Brady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DBW, DBW report crews did a great job as usual cleaning up after Great American Weekend. Uh, you may have seen these markings. The crews been out here marking the street. Uh, we have to mark the utilities uh, on West Main Street, uh, from North Church Street to High Street, in order for NYSIG to begin a gas main improvement project. That's it. All right, thank you. Trustee Chart? Nothing. Great American Weekend was a success. 
No major uh, incidents whatsoever. A couple of uh, heat related medical incidents, but everyone was fine. So, uh, that was it. All right. Trustee Smith? Uh, All right. Just for the uh, sewer report, a new motor, impeller, and seal have been replaced on the Dykeman Drive pump station. And I'll just concur with everyone else. Great American Weekend was a huge success. Thank you to the Chamber, the Great American Weekend Committee, the police, DPW, fire police, and everyone for uh, doing a great job, as always, to make it a great weekend for Goshen. And also, uh, just to follow up on the cornerstone thing, I'm looking forward to that. It's really nice to get people into Legion Park and it. And I think that Shakespeare in the Park is a perfect application of that. All right, any uh, public comments? Okay. <laughs> uh, could you please uh, bring us up to date as to the status of the federal Superfund site on uh, West Main Street, the cleanup? Where, you know, where are we at with that? The federal Superfund site? The old uh, gas works, New York State Electric and Gas Building. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have anything off the end of it. I'd have to look into that. Um, I, can do, I can do some research on that and get back to you. That'd be great. Uh, the reason I'm asking is because uh, the last environmental, re uh, environmental Review Board meeting, there was uh, some discussion about trying to solicit volunteers to come out and get into the Rio Grande or help clean up, clean up the Rio Grande. And essentially, uh, I've been tasked to find out is, is that safe? Is it safe for folks to be exposed to the water? Uh, is it uh, reasonable that the public should be well, there, out the there was a meeting some time ago with the NYSEG people and the, uh, and the regulatory agencies involved, but I, you know, I think that's more than a year ago. Um, but I would suggest that it's probably not a good idea to have volunteers enter into the main drainage channel in the village, regardless of the situation with NYSEG. Okay. Uh, next question, is it true that the Village Board is considering a uh, smoking ban in uh, public parks, in particular the Church Park, during events like Great American Weekend and, uh, and uh, the vegetable markets? Um, if so, why are you considering this? And if not, why aren't you? That has not been brought up to this board. Um, it's a good question. I know a lot of other municipalities have taken similar actions and approaches. Uh, I believe Orange County has uh, prohibited smoking in the county parks. Um, it hasn't brought up before. But other than that, that's really the only... So not a topic of discussion, President? It has not been discussed. No, okay. it has not. Uh, recycling bins in the park? Are there any, or is there any, if not, is there any intent to introduce them? Uh, at this point, I do not believe that there are. I think down the line we would love to do that. It's like anything else, it's a question of funds and unfortunately enforcement. What you find is, you know, another municipality I've, I've seen, they put out public receptacles, but what ends up happening is people just end up throwing regular garbage in their cycling and then it becomes, you know, mm -hmm. in-house workers spend time sorting stuff out and, and so it's a, a manpower, you know, thing. Um, I'd like to have them though, and I think in the future it's something that we could definitely be looking into and should look into. Um, but at this point, just trying to keep costs down to buy with the tax cap, you know. I do think at Craigville there are some recycling bins. Okay. And the only reason I noticed them is because I picked my 14 year old from soccer practice and watched him take his water bottle and put it in the wrong bin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe there are ones that I'm not aware of in, in some of the village parks. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Dave's out of himself for a ticket here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he took care he, of it. He did that on way. I'm sure he took care of it. <laughs> And uh, just to revisit a question that I've been asking quite a while ago, any success in uncovering or unearthing the uh, bill from TAM or the uh, expenses incurred by the village to restore water uh, service to 159 West Main Street? Not at this point. My only um, thought that I think I've said before is, you know, TAM does different things for when the village needs work, so maybe it was finally with another bill, but I, I don't have anything concrete at this moment. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other system comments? I I went looking uh, online for the two laws that were discussed tonight, and uh, they were posted on a new site, and it was nice to be able to get them. Turns out that the uh, the CS1 proposal didn't have the maps and, and the uh, use table with it, so I came down and got it. In the process of speaking with the village clerk, uh, it came to light that uh, I, I mentioned that uh, I noticed that minutes for 2012 are now online, and that's nice. 
um, but I noticed that all of the minutes that have been posted uh, previously, and we were, I guess at this point about five years or so of, of minutes, uh, are gone. And I was informed that, oh, they're gone. They, there's no intention to place them on the site. Uh, some issue with the vendor they could retain to do this, uh, and a switch of hosting companies, and they were just dumped. Um, if, in fact, this is the case, I'm extremely distressed because, as you've pointed out in the past, minutes are your history, they're a point of reference. to another and they weren't transferred and lost, uh, they should exist in backup. And I would urge the board to make sure, certain that those old minutes get reposted to the site. They're a very valuable resource, not only for today, but for tomorrow. Not only for you and me, but for those who will come after us. And I think it's very important to get them back up on the web. I will, uh, I will look into that, Joel. Um, I think you make some valid points. But I would also like to say, and I've said this in the past, but it bears repeating, I, I have to continue to commend our village for all the work that she's done on yes, this. That, that was because I, I understand, but I, you know, I think that it, it's not really been made it clear enough on the fact that this individual has been doing a full-time job with all the other responsibilities on top of that is now basically tasked with being the village's webmaster on top of everything else that needs to get done at certain times and gets done very well. So I understand that you haven't been happy at the pace that we've been going, but I can tell you, given the other responsibilities and things that have to happen in this building on a day-to-day -day basis in serving all members of the public, I think that our village clerk has been exemplary. And that, uh, I, I'm not arguing with that. That's okay. not, okay. not the point that I'm raising at all. Okay. I'm, I'm simply speaking for getting those minutes back online, and I do believe that your previous webmaster has backup copies. Okay. Very good. I'll yeah, look into and that. and uh, it shouldn't be a big deal to get it posted back up. Okay. Any other comments? Oh gosh, one more note, if I may. <laughs> Did you have anything else, Joel? Uh, no, no, no. Oh yes, uh, sorry, I'm no, sorry. No, sorry. What, one last thing, I, I have to, it's not official unless I do. Mr. Donovan, where do we stand on the <laughs> consent order and compliance conferencing? Uh, discussions have been ongoing. Um, I think we've talked about before about the environmental benefit project, that those discussions are ongoing. The only thing I can say about the, the pace, uh, the pace was accelerating. I am advised as recently as, as Friday that pace may be decelerating as a result of some vacation schedules in the state and people having to respond or comment upon certain things that we put forward. So the, the way DEC is furloughing people, we're lucky there's anybody to talk to it often. But as I said before though, I mean, you know, we're doing what we need to do in terms of compliance. And I think that's something that the, the building board should be proud of with the time, the effort, the money that's been spent to remediate the stockpile site and to make substantial progress on the, uh, uh, the surcharges and the II issues. Neil? Um, I've been using uh, Blooming Deals Internet Service Provision. They've donated it to me, or at least let me piggyback on them to upload municipal board meetings and such, you know, fire commissioners meeting, whatever it is that we happen to be covering to the World Wide Web. And they just closed and moved out. And so essentially I'm just looking for anybody, any business or anybody in the village that would be willing to exchange the donation of ISP service for an ad at the beginning of every meeting, sort of like what we did with Bloomingdale's. It doesn't have to be a static uh, placard. It could be a little, you know, a little bit at the beginning or a little television type commercial or something. But anyway, I'm just looking for anybody in the village, any business, and I know you folks are networked, you might want to just mention that about, see if anybody would be willing to exchange, you know, the donation of ISP service in exchange for a little ad. I would do a letter to the editor to get the word out about that deal. You will, or? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I would oh. <laughs> 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 Well, I know you, you folks uh, are socially active, so I thought you might want to just mention it about counters. You know, maybe you know somebody who'd be willing to Pick that up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other trustee comments or anything tonight? All right. I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor, say it by saying aye. 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 aye.
Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.